Today, I want to talk about the power of impartation. Secondary title would simply be giving yourself away. See, sometimes we use big words, and you hear preachers use big words, and they have a very simple meaning. Just give yourself away. How can we best minister the life of God into the heart of humanity? How can we best be a blessing to others by giving ourselves away? You know, that's difficult. Let me tell you why that's it's simplistic, but let me tell you why it's difficult. Because it is not the way of our flesh. The way of our flesh wants us to serve ourselves rather than to serve God and others. That, that, come on, everybody can say that because we all deal with that. We all deal with with the flesh that wants to do what we want to do. But in reality, God has called us to give ourselves away. When we serve Him, in reality, we're serving others. How can you serve God if you don't serve others? You can't. It's impossible. Serving God means that we are building his kingdom. What is his kingdom? Is it this building? It's people. Souls of men and women. And so I, today I, I want to take a little time to talk about the power of impartation. I need to begin with a little story. This, uh, this is a touching story about a, a little girl true story. Her name is, is Hattie Mae Wyatt. Never heard that name. Maybe, I don't know, if, maybe some of you got to meet her. Uh, she died in 1884. Little girl, Hattie May Wyatt, lived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She lived in one of the poorest areas in the city. She was from a poor family, loved Jesus, loved attending Sunday school. There were so many children. The church was so small. Sometimes she just couldn't get in. On one such day, pastor found little Hattie crying. pastor said, what's wrong? He said, there's no room for me today in Sunday school. pastor had took her to the Sunday school room. Oh, it was crowded. pastor told Hattie one day, Going to have enough money to build a church big enough so all the children can come. Little Hattie didn't live a long time. She died in March 1884. She was six years old. It was just a couple of months shy of her seventh birthday. Pastor Conwell was called take care of her funeral service. Her mother discovered under her pillow there was a little red, worn out purse. She'd gotten something. Inside that purse was two things. Some pennies and sadly. The note said, this is to help little church bigger so more children go to Sunday school. She had saved, I have no idea where she got any money, but she had saved for two years. <gasps> Fifty-seven pennies. Now that sounds like nothing, but in our currency, that's $20 plus today how that little four or five-year-old girl got 57 pennies is beyond. 
a significant amount of money. Took her all that time to save it. That 57 cents became the spark of a series of fundraising campaigns that resulted in the building of church that was, it was called Grace Baptist Church and then became Temple Baptist Church in Philadelphia. It seats 3,300 people and has over 5,000 members today. Oh, and by the way, out of that 57 cents came Temple College, which now is known as Temple University. Out of that 57 cents also came a place called Good Samaritan Hospital in Philadelphia, large Sunday school, where all the kids could come. Power of impartation, power of giving yourself. I don't know how that little girl got that money. Then she made a choice and a decision to take the money that she had in her hand. She got sick and died, and her little sister died five days later. She left behind a legacy, and she left behind a gift that is still ministering people in 2022. Amen. Power of impartation. Power of giving. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 says this. Paul said this to the Thessalonian people, we loved you so much. Remember, I said that worship is about serving people. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. We not only gave you the gospel, but we gave you our lives. We not only gave you the gospel, but we gave you our lives. Significant ministry will not necessarily come. And listen, how can they hear unless they have a preacher? Hear the word. There has to be the word of God. There has to be a preacher. There has to be a messenger. But let me tell you something. It is very apparent that there was something more that the people needed. They needed somebody to care about them and love them. It's been said that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It'll be impossible to speak into people's lives just because you have the ability and you have the knowledge to do so and you are charismatic and you are a speaker. You care nothing about those people. You'll never speak into their life anything Or even if you have life-changing words, it will not change their life. Paul gave both his care and his knowledge to the Thessalonians. He gave both things, care and knowledge. Paul's preaching was effective not only uh, not because he only gave the gospel, but he gave himself as well. And he gave because of his genuine love for people. If you don't love people, if you don't love people, if you don't love people, you're not going to love. I don't like people sometimes. I promise you I don't love. I 
I'm always dealing with there is there is a conflict in my heart. Oftentimes, when I have to make tough choices and decisions because of people's actions, their personal choices, and sometimes that causes me to have to make choices that oftentimes wrenches my heart. Because oftentimes I don't like people or that like actions, the attitudes, the choices of people I always place to love in my heart. simplest definition for the word impartation is giving a gift, giving what you have. Say it with me, giving what I have. I don't have money. You got some. The kind of powerful impartation that I want to talk to you about today is, is this, and there's there's all kinds of things that we can talk about, but there's basically three things. I have four listed here, but there's basically three things. I want to talk to you about knowledge, wisdom, or experience that you can give to others. It's important. You say, what in the world does that have to do with anything? We give the gospel, but we also give everything that we have learned in life to help other folks miss some of the mess that we have had to go through. It's simply called discipleship. That principle is as old as the Bible. Do you hear me? The principle of discipleship is as old as the Bible. God developed and formed the family for the purpose of what? Impartation, discipleship. Training, teaching, leading. And it all happens through communication because of love. It all happens through communication because of love. How many know it would be easier not to teach or train others than to do so? How many have ever had some experience in teaching and training others and sometimes become frustrated with that work? How many know that people will not always listen to what you have to say? How many know that some folks are just stubborn, bullheaded, contentious, ugly? in their actions. Just are. I want to help you, but you won't allow me to help you. I want to make a difference in your life, but you won't allow me to. Come on, God's called us and positioned us. Jesus is not walking this earth anymore. He's called us to be the light of the world, a city set on hill that can't be hid. He's called us to be his mouthpiece. He's called us to love on his behalf. He's called us to be ambassadors and examples and witnesses to the world. And it becomes frustrating to do that when people will not receive what we know to be true. Have you ever all learned about something that will work? How many know something that'll work? You ever get excited about something that works and try to tell somebody else this works and they tell you it won't work? Or they don't get as excited as you did? They just kind of ignore you? And you say, what's wrong with them? Why won't they listen? Why won't they? Children? Your children? (laughs) I remember a day, Chad is one of my greatest fans. 
he is, and, and Chad is. Chad is so good to me. And and but there was a time when when he he'd do the opposite thing. I tell him. talk about getting upset. What's wrong with you? He tells a lot of stories today that I don't say. I can't, he told me one this week. I said, Chad, that's not true. He said, just do that. <laughs> Communication causes love. If it is not the love of God, if it is not the Spirit of God, evil in me to love and care about me, I will soon walk away from you. All of you are ministers, everyone in this room. It's oftentimes frustration that causes people to walk away from trying to. many times would have I through the years like to walk I cannot tell you the number of times I like to walk the love of God is compelling the love of God is compelling and when you pray come on you can get upset and you can get tore up about a thing with people, but then you start praying. Then the love of God compels you to pray. How many times have I been pinned and said, this is it? Maybe in a relationship, maybe dealing with someone, God said, Pray, the Spirit of God softens your heart. The Spirit of God does. Because why? We are called to minister the life of God in the heart of God. Pastor Steve preached a month about telling our story. Our story includes wisdom, knowledge, and experience. Now let me let me try to hurry along so that I don't it's not, I don't want it to become an eternal message without an end. <laughs> wisdom, knowledge, and experience isn't something to be stored away in the recesses of your mind. Do you hear me? The wisdom and it's the easy thing to do. Because I promise you, I, I'll probably reiterate this over and again. It is difficult to try to give the wisdom, the knowledge, the experience to other people because oftentimes they just, they just, they just not open to receive it. They don't want it. Please listen for a few minutes. They're meant to be given away to others who need to know. How many know that other folks can be blessed if they could just know what you know? Come on. How many know that other people could be blessed if, if they could just know what you know? I understand what you're telling me, but I tried. I, I tried to tell two people. Tried to tell one, they wouldn't receive it. They just rolled their eyes at me. Tried to tell somebody else, and, and they just didn't pay any attention. So I... No, you can't. Can I tell you, in life, when you're dealing with people, you're going to have what seems to be far many more failures than you do successes. But how many know that Jesus never quits on humanity, even though the majority of humanity rejects him? 
And so we cannot quit even when, because listen, here's what happens. It hurts our feelings, makes us angry, and it makes us feel like, why try if people will not receive something that is going to be beneficial for them the rest of their life? Why even try? Because all of these people that I've tried with didn't receive it, they didn't get it, and they're still failing, and they're still doing the same thing the same way, and they're still getting the result. Why would any one else be any different when you run across that one who is. Run across that one who is ready to receive Jesus and ready to have their life changed and ready to go a different route and have a teachable spirit. How much is that worth? Power of impartation. Giving yourself When you leave this world, what are you taking with you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Leave this world, what are you taking with you? What will last for eternity? What will last for eternity? And, and that's a right answer, but it's a wrong answer. Hopefully, all of the years of ministry have produced an eternal work in somebody that will spend eternity with me in heaven. That's what matters. All of the accomplishments, all the accolades of them, all of the rewards of your labor, your physical labor, is not going with you. In fact, in fact, all of that will burn up and it will mean nothing. But what will survive and what will be precious and what will be gold and, and come out of the furnace tried in the fire and, and will come through like gold and silver and precious stones. Let me tell you what will come through. It is the eternal work that you have done to lead men and women to Jesus Christ. Nothing else matters. We're giving ourselves away for the cause of Christ. Understand, I wrestle with it myself. I literally wrestle with, I, there's so many things. I'm 66, but yet there's so many things that I still want to do. There's so many things that I still want to touch. There's still so many things that I want to lay my hands on. And I was, and, and, and the thought process, I, I'm not leaving, uh, I, I'm not quitting being the pastor of this church, the lead pastor of this church, because I, I, I want to get away from ministry. But, but that would be the desire of my flesh. To just go down and spend the rest of my life in my little special corner of the world, away from everybody and everything, and just enjoy myself. But I understand that is not the calling on my life, and I understand that is not the purpose for me, and I understand that if I live to be 80, if I live to be 85, there's still a call of God on my life to minister the life of God into the heart of humanity and love the people around me. Somehow I've got to be a voice crying in the wilderness. Somehow I've got to make a difference. That is the purpose of life. Yesterday, today, forever. So, get to do everything. Get to see everything that I'd like to see. Get to travel everywhere that I'd like to travel. Able to do. It's be. I pull my, I hope you're just hearing my heart today. I cannot pull myself away from the people. 
need my experience, need my wisdom, my knowledge. I am literally, I would literally be taking everything that God has put into me and pulling it away and putting it in a treasure chest and saying, this is mine when it belongs to everybody who surrounds me. Steve is, Pastor Steve is a intelligent, wise, and will, with the help of God, will lead this ministry. Sounds arrogant. Inside. Just find out that it's the truth. <laughs> Your lack of gold, full of hidden treasure, it's worthless. It's placed in the hand. Gold is absolutely worthless. Get it out of the mind. I've made this statement a few times. I tell you, I have to kill you. You ever made that statement? If I tell you, I have to kill you. Everybody knows something that would be beneficial to another person. Some just refuse to share the gold in their mind. It's my gold. In fact, it is my leverage. It is my leverage will always need me as long as I keep the secret to myself. Love it. Craig has helped me with Tennessee several times. He's made several trips with me. He's one of the hardest workers I've ever met. But he will not sit down. Tell him to. He'll go find something else to do. Just a worker. And, and, uh, one day, it's a little bit out of the ordinary, because he's watching over my shoulder. He does that? He's always can't do anything. He'll find a broom, pick up. A, he'll do something. He'll pick up a rake and go rake the dirt. That's a that's the honest to God's truth. He rake the dirt, make it pretty, make nice lines at it with a rake. <laughs> One day, he's looking over shoulder. He said to me, I know nothing about electric. Just watching to see if I can find something. Dylan and I work together a lot of different Dylan evidently paid a little bit of attention because he's bragging to me about he's become quite handy man. He has. He took his dryer apart and put a new heating element in it and put it back together and it works. Rather than scrapping it, he fixed it. Learning how to work his hands. He watched me a lot of times and I didn't know whether he's learning anything. 
But here's one thing. If he didn't learn anything else, he learned sometimes just take a hold of something, how to do it or not. <laughs> Everybody knows something official. We're people of impartation. It's God's will that we give away what he's given us. It'd be a shame. No, it'd be a sin. Me to take the knowledge, wisdom, and experience that God has given me, giving it away. Let me help you. Sean, you had your hand straight up as straight as you could get it a while ago. Been down that road, haven't you? Don't quit. But it's frustrating. Is it, is it frustrating? You know, you know if they'll listen, it's going to be a blessing to them. You know if they'll listen, it's going to work. You've tried it, you've proved it, you've done it over and over again, and you try to give it to people, and they look at you like you're stupid. Get it. I'm going to keep sharing knowledge, wisdom, and experience. Understand and embrace the truth that our greatest mission, impartation, is offering Jesus and his love. Understand. We also, we also have the ability to help folks do better in life if we share what we're good at. I'm going to hurry now because I'm, I, I didn't. You know, you, you put it together. You put it together and you think, okay, this is not going to take very long at all. And then you get up here and everything changes. Do you, do you, do you, do you understand that? Everything just changes. Uh, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. I remember the days when I would struggle to preach 15 minutes and think, will I ever be able to preach longer than 15 minutes? In fact, I was the favorite preacher at the church because they knew if I was preaching, it was going to be 15 or 20 minutes and we were going home. Why did that change? Therefore, Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, uh, 19 to 20, his last command, church, Therefore, go make disciples of Jesus, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Teach. 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 All right. Teach. Remember, every new convent is a baby in Christ. They grow a little bit quickly and they start getting into everything. And some things that they get into is good, and some things is not good. And sometimes they'll try to eat way too much of one thing. You've got to be careful as grandparents because you'll just keep shoveling it in because they enjoyed it. Teach these new disciples obey all the commands I've given. Teach them. Teach them. Teach them. That gets frustrating too, because we get this we get this hyper uh, uh, grace teaching, and we we just we just we just live and we do whatever we want to do, and it's okay, and God's okay with it. But Jesus said, "Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given." That becomes frustrating when people say, "It don't matter. God don't care. I'm saved. I'm born again. It doesn't matter. It does matter." As Jesus said, "It matters." Be sure of this. I'm with you always. It's nice. I didn't see that. Be sure. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Important. It's important. I think Pastor Steve told us it's important for us to share our testimonies and our stories. It's important. It is our experiences, both good and bad, that give others hope. You hear me? Our experience is good and bad. Transparency is not a bad thing. I don't like to talk about the bad things, but I have sit down oftentimes with men and talked about my failures in life. And oftentimes those young men have been able to yeah, understand. 
is our experience is both good and bad that, that, that gives others hope. We are, we are people of impartation. We must be careful. But we must be careful. We allow, give us impartation. Be careful. We allow to impart to us. Hear me? Impartation can be a blessing or a curse. You hear me? That's the reason why we need to get counsel and advice from somebody who has a proven track record of loving, serving Jesus. It is important to get advice and direction from somebody who has done well in the area that you need help in. <laughs> just because you go into a counselor doesn't mean that counselor knows anything about being successful. They just have a degree. Gone. I said it. You'd be better off to go find somebody that has a third grade education that, that, that has been married 60 years and knows how to be successful in relationship than go to some counselor who's been married three times and has no clue what successful relationship's about. Be careful who you allow to impart to you. In fact, we're supposed to know who's speaking into our lives. I'm not against counseling, but you need to know who's giving the counsel. <laughs> how, how many of y'all got mad at some stuff that teachers are teaching in classroom today? And you don't like it. We don't just trust anybody with our babies, do we? We don't just trust any message that comes along. Why? Because we want them to get the right message. We want them to get the truth. We don't want them to get some knucklehead's opinion or idea of what might work. I think I said it mean. I could say it a lot meaner than that. Straighter than that. Be careful who speaks into your life. Is impartation going to be a blessing or cursed? Gift of hope or discouragement? A gift that leads to victory or defeat? The power of impartation can make you or break you. Be careful speaking into your life. <laughs> Got through my I haven't got to Moses. I'm quitting because I promised myself I was not. I don't have to finish. Help me, guys. Help me. I, 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 you probably know by now I'm a common sense kind of preacher. Always dealt with things that touch our lives on a daily basis. How many want young people to be successful? You have to teach them. Teach them more. Teach them the ways of God so they can be successful in every area of their life. Skip through some things because there's a couple of other things that I want to say as we end. Love talk. Just pray. Moses done something that was important. Trained Joshua 40 years in the wilderness. There was a transferring from one to another so that the one receiving could function much more like doing party. Need people who are successful, 
lot of, I want you to get, don't, don't, don't shut me down just yet. Listen to this. You need people who are successful in finances to impart their wisdom, their knowledge, and experience to others. We need people who are gifted in the area of administration to impart that wisdom and knowledge and experience to others. We need people who are gifted in teaching to impart that wisdom, knowledge, and experience to others. The church has got in the habit of letting those with a leadership title do it. And there is a gold mine in this room today that's full of gold. And who is it helping? And who is it making richer if you just keep it all to yourself? How is it helping the economy of the church? How is it helping the economy of the kingdom if you're not sharing what's on the inside of you, what you've learned, what you've grown in? And listen, <coughs> I'm telling you this. If there's areas of weakness in your life, you need to be running to somebody and saying, can you give me some of your gold? I need it. It is pride that will keep, oh God, listen to me. It is pride that will keep you in your place of failure because you don't want to ask anybody for help. It's pride. We need people who've been successful in the area of relationship to impart their wisdom and knowledge and experience to others. We need people who are successful in the area of money to impart wisdom, knowledge, and experience to others. When we all join our God-given talents and abilities together and we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, there's no limit what we can accomplish together. If we help each other, we can all be stronger than we were before. Do you hear me? I said if we can all if we can all just help each other, we can all be stronger than what we were before. You may never be brilliant in some areas, but you can be better than you were. Amen. We've watched people grow in their financial ability. It may not be their greatest gift in life, but we've watched them grow. <coughs> Administration will never be some people's great strength, but you can be better than you were if you can get around somebody that will intimidate you a little bit. Come on, I know it's hard to get around people that intimidate you, but you need to get around people who intimidate you. That means they, they know more than you do, and you're a little uncomfortable in their presence because you may end up feeling a little foolish around them. It's okay if people love you. They're not going to make you feel small or insignificant, but quite the contrary. They're going to take their gold and say, Here, let me give you, I want to share this with you. I want you to have this. help each other and we can be better and we can build the kingdom of God stronger by understanding the power of impartation can you stand